दोस्तों मैं हूं आरजे राजीव और आज के हमारे स्पेशल प्रोग्राम में आप सबका स्वागत है और हेल्दी लिविंग विद आरजे राजीव और डॉक्टर अहमद नवाज के साथ हम आपका स्वागत करते हैं एंड इस प्रोग्राम को शुरू करने से पहले मैं आप सबको एक बात कह दूं कि जो हमारा जो प्रोग्राम है स्मॉल डिस्क्लेमर कि दिस प्रोग्राम इज एजुकेशन सीरीज इज चिट चैट टॉकिंग टू सम ऑफ द एक्सपर्ट इन दिस फील्ड however if you have any conditions if you want to consult please consult your physician directly um it's very important to know that because hum log bahut si baatein karenge bahut sari baatein karenge aur wo sari baatein aapke education ke liye sahi rahengi par koi agar condition ho to please apne doctor se consult kare aur to pehle to स्वागत हमारे सभी सुनने वालों का और स्वागत हमारे पैनल का डॉक्टर अहमद नवाज डॉक्टर सुनील खुशलानी और नवीन अजी वेलकम हियर टू द हेल्दी लिविंग एजुकेशन सीरीज तो प्रोग्राम शुरू करने से पहले आजकल के दौर में जब ये कोविड का समाज समय चल रहा है तो बहुत सारी कहानियां आ रही हैं कि सुसाइडल कहानियां आ रही हैं डिप्रेशन की कहानियां आ रही हैं एंग्जाइटी की कहानियां आ रही हैं स्ट्रेस की कहानियां आ रही हैं तो ऐसा लगने लगता है कि इसी समय में सबको स्ट्रेस हुआ है इससे पहले ना कोई डिप्रेशन था ना इसके बाद कोई डिप्रेशन होगा <laughs> और मैं सबको बताना चाहता हूं कि डिप्रेशन एक ऐसी चीज है जो आ, हमेशा से रही है और ये ऐसी लोग बातें करते हैं कि दोस्तों से बात कर लो तो सब ठीक हो जाएगा इट्स नॉट लाइक दैट इट्स अ मेडिकल कंडीशन एंड I I'm no expert in that that's why I thought I will get the people who are specialized in this field um so with that I would like to introduce uh, the panel folks and I'll let them introduce themselves about what they do and how what we'll be talking about so I'm going to start with uh, Dr Ahmed Nawaz yeah hi rajiv kya hal hai kafi din ho gaye mulaqat hue hue but thank you very much for inviting us on this uh, great discussion actually uh again a lot of people know my name is ahmed nawaz i am internal medicine physician i am practicing in state of maryland for last uh, 20 plus years actually and i work as a gatekeeper <clears throat> next dr sunil yeah uh, i am sunil kushlani i am a psychiatrist uh, uh, adult addiction psychiatrist i have been working in the state of baltimore uh, maryland and baltimore for the last 20 years um and um i come across these conditions every day in my work and even when i'm not at work you know people tend to call me and want to ask questions or want to uh, relay those concerns so i would love to you know have this conversation with all of you just as a way to spread the word that these are very common conditions and it's really important for all of us in the south asian community to talk to each other about these just like we talk about anything else it, there is nothing uh, greater or less than uh in this conversation everything is open for you know um, the 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 conversation dr navina good afternoon um namaskar and adab i'm navina himant i am a child psychiatrist i've been in practice in rockville maryland for the last 25 years and um we excited to be on this panel and discuss the things that are so important and so true and especially keeping in mind that children are separate entities not extension of the family and so they have their own issues and this as a medical condition is very much viable in that we need to look at that so give us that great welcome welcome all or uh, when i was initially planning this session uh, maine iska topic diya tha mental health <laughs> और सबसे पहले मेरी एजुकेशन हुई उसके बारे में कि मेंटल हेल्थ इज अ वाइड टॉपिक तो वी हैव टू ब्रिंग इट डाउन सो व्हाट वी ब्रॉट डाउन टू वाज डिप्रेशन एंड फोकसिंग द डिप्रेशन पार्ट ऑन रिकॉग्निशन एंड स्टिग्मा अटैच टू इट स्पेशली विद द साउथ एशियन कम्युनिटी एंड दोनों चीजें बहुत जरूरी हैं और uh, जब हम पैनल की डिस्कशन में जा रहे हैं तो अहमद मैं तुमसे पहला क्वेश्चन पूछना चाहूंगा कि हाउ डू यू रिकॉग्नाइज डिप्रेशन अगर कोई पेशेंट आपके पास आता है आपसे बातें करता है हाउ डू यू रिकॉग्नाइज दैट द पर्सन मे बी डिप्रेस्ड आई थिंक राजीव ऑब्वियसली इतना आसान नहीं है डिप्रेशन को सरफेस के ऊपर लेके आना स्पेशली साउथ ईस्टर्न कम्युनिटी के अंदर एक तो डिप्रेशन का स्टिग्मा बहुत ज्यादा है बात करने से लोग घबराते हैं 
तो मैं इसको थोड़ा सा डायसेक्ट करूंगा क्योंकि एज अ गेट कीपर फर्स्ट टाइम पेशेंट की इंटरेक्शन मेरे साथ होती है फिर मैं आगे रेफर करता हूँ पेशेंट्स को जब मेरी एग्जामिनेशन के बाद मेरे दिमाग में आता है कि पेशेंट जो है डिप्रेशन से सफर कर रहा है तो वो फिर आगे रेफरल जाया जाती है अडल्ट सकाइट्रिस्ट को या चाइल्ड सकाइट्रिस्ट को तो मैं इस कैटेगरी को दो में डिवाइड करूंगा एक जो हमारी फर्स्ट जनरेशन आई हुई है फ्रॉम इंडिया पाकिस्तान बांग्लादेश श्रीलंका जहां से भी फर्स्ट टाइम आके अमेरिका में सेटल हुए हैं उनके इश्यूज क्या हैं दूसरा मैं डिवाइड करूंगा जो हमारी सेकंड जनरेशन यहाँ पे है और उन दोनों के इश्यूज में थोड़ा सा फर्क है तो अनफॉर्चुनेटली डिप्रेशन जो है इट्स अ वेरी सब्जेक्टिव फाइंडिंग आवाज आ रही मेरी क्योंकि डिप्रेशन अनफॉर्चुनेटली और फॉर्चुनेटली यू कैन कॉल इट इट इज सब्जेक्टिव फाइंडिंग ऐसा कोई ब्लड टेस्ट नहीं है या कोई ऐसी रेडियोलॉजिकल स्टडीज नहीं है जिसको करके मैं कंफर्म कर दूंगा कि ये बीमारी इस पेशेंट को है तो ज्यादातर इंटरव्यूज के ऊपर बेस्ड होती है पेशेंट की बॉडी लैंग्वेज पे बेस्ड होती है पेशेंट कंप्लेन लेके आते हैं उनसे फर्दर डिस्कशन होती हैं फिर हम उसको आगे लेके चलते हैं तो तो इसी के इंटरव्यू के प्रोसेस के अंदर हमें एज अ फिजिशियन पता लगता है कि पेशेंट सफर कर रहा है किसी मेंटल इलनेस तो नहीं कहूंगा डिप्रेशन से या एनजाइटी से या नहीं बल्कि सवाल मैं सुनील से करना चाहूंगा कि हाउ एज एन अडल्ट सकाइट्रिस्ट ही हैंडल्स दीज टू डिफरेंट जनरेशन एक्चुअली इसके एक्सपीरियंस कैसे हैं जब ये दो जनरेशन देखता है डिफरेंट डिफरेंट कैटेगरीज में तो फर्स्ट थिंग इज की आई थिंक वेन एवर यू हैव वेन एवर यू डेवलप अ रिलेशनशिप विद अ पेशेंट फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम आई ट्राई टू हैव very honest conversations with them and uh, whether it's a parent or whether it's a uh, whether it's a child or whether it's a teenager or a young adult agar first i have to identify um who is the patient that i'm treating so as an adult, adult psychiatrist let's say i have a patient who is comes to my office who is 24 years old now by legal standards he is not a child anymore he's an adult and if he's an adult he has his own rights he has his own प्राइवेसी राइट सी हैज ओन कॉन्फिडेंशियलिटी राइट तो मैं पहला तो पहला तो ये डिस्कशन पेशेंट से करता हूँ कि द फर्स्ट कॉल दैट केम टू मी केम फ्रॉम योर फादर और यू केम फ्रॉम योर मदर एंड दे हैव ब्रॉट यू टू माई ऑफिस मे बी दे माइट बी बोथ सिटिंग दैट सो बेसिकली मैं पहले दोनों को बिठा के ये उनको समझाता हूँ कि देखो ये पेशेंट है ये अभी एडल्ट है और मे बी ही वॉन्ट्स टू से सर्टन थिंग्स दैट ऑल ऑफ यू नो अबाउट but maybe he wants to talk about certain things that are concerning to him that he wants to keep it private i'm going to let him tell me what's okay for me to talk to you and not okay to talk to you so the one rule where i don't follow confidentiality or the one place or one uh, moment where i don't follow confidentiality is agar iski life ko koi danger hai ya kisi aur ki life ko koi danger hai tabhi main iska permission nahi lunga main aapko seedha phone karunga bolunga ki ye ये ये क्रिटिकल स्टेज पे है या ये इमरजेंसी स्टेज पे है मुझे ये ये करना है मुझे उसको हॉस्पिटलाइज करना है तभी मैं ये कॉन्फिडेंशियली लॉस को मैं आई के नजरअंदाज करके मैं आपको फोन कर सकता हूँ पर अगर बाकी अगर अगर उ, उ, उस हद तक बात नहीं पहुंची है इफ द मैटर हैज रीच दैट स्टेज देन आई विल नॉट डिस्कलोज एनी थिंग अनलेस ही गिवस मी द परमिशन और ही गिवस मी uh the uh release to let to talk to you so i basically start my relationship with them with this conversation and clarify boundaries now sometimes people whatever frame you set for the patient or the family some people follow that frame but some people always try to go out of that frame you know patient ke sath session ho jayega to baad mein ek minute ke baad fir se pita ji andar aayega bolega by the way i want to tell you xyz by the way i want you to you know here's my cell phone agar main aapko call karu to is it okay so you get into these you know sometimes tangled relationships and we have to constantly refer that refer them back to that frame ki nahi humne decide kiya tha ki agar aapko mujhe kuch bolna hai uske bare mein to theek hai you can tell me that but i cannot tell you anything that he tells me unless he gives me that permission so i have to constantly part of my work with the family or part of my work with the patient is to constantly keep reminding them ki ye frame hai ye daira hai ye parameters hai iske andar mujhe kaam karna hai and if you some people will not agree with that they'll say no we want to know everything then i say you know this is not this is not going to work in within with unless you are willing to follow these parameters which makes it very clear and makes it a very honest and safe environment for the 
adult child to talk to me. So, uh, question I have, <laughs> and before I come to Naveena, uh, Ahmed or Sunil ke liye, and this question is from Ayesha Mohsin, uh, and she's asking, how can you uh, deal with a patient who doesn't recognize that he or she needs help? It's a great question. Actually, as a man, I'm going to answer a little bit. When my first time patients come to me, especially young adults, especially young adults, who have legal limits, में आ गए हैं अडल्ट हो गए हैं पेरेंट्स के साथ आप बात नहीं कर सकते हैं बहुत कॉमन प्रॉब्लम जो मैं देखता हूं उनकी नॉन स्पेसिफिक फाइंडिंग्स होती हैं एक आके पेशेंट मुझे बोलेगा मेरे सर में दर्द है सर के बाद बाजू में दर्द है बाजू के बाद टांग में दर्द हो रही है जब वो मल्टीपल कंप्लेंट्स लेके मेरे पास आते हैं जिनकी कोई कोरिलेशन नहीं बनती है फ्रॉम एन इंटरनल मेडिसिन परस्पेक्टिव वहां मुझे समझ आ जाती है कि देयर इज सम अंडरलाइंग प्रॉब्लम जो पेशेंट मुझे बताना चाह रहा है फिर मैं इस इंटरव्यू को एक्सटेंड करता हूं टुवर्ड्स साइकोलॉजिकल एस्पेक्ट्स की तरफ ज्यादातर पेशेंट्स आके मुझे नहीं बताते हैं और आपको पेशेंट्स को ओपन करना पड़ता है और आपको लीडिंग क्वेश्चंस नहीं करने चाहिए लीडिंग क्वेश्चन का मतलब मैं जाके पेशेंट को सीधा नहीं कह सकता हूं आपको डिप्रेशन तो नहीं है ऐसा नहीं होता हमेशा हमारा इंटरव्यू का प्रोसेस जो होता है वो इन्वेस्टिगेशन की तरीके से होता है हमें खोज लगानी पड़ती है ढूंढना पड़ता है बात करनी पड़ती है उनसे कॉन्फिडेंस गेन करना पड़ता है उसके बाद पेशेंट खुलता है खुद ही बताते हैं वो और वो फिर बातें शुरू करना कर, वो बात करना शुरू कर देते हैं हम लोगों के साथ और हमें पता लग जाता है कि कोई मैं उनको ये ये जरूर उनको मैं कहता हूं कि आपका मेडिकल इश्यूज मैं रूल आउट कर दूंगा आपके ब्लड टेस्ट भी हो जाएंगे अगर जरूरत पड़ी तो मैं कोई एक्सरे भी करवा लूंगा लेकिन मुझे नहीं लगता है कि कोई मेडिकल प्रॉब्लम है इज देर समथिंग एल्स यू वॉन्ट टू टॉक विद मी तो वो आहिस्ता आहिस्ता कॉन्फिडेंस लेके आप पेशेंट खुलना शुरू कर देते हैं I will just say, is there any time that this is more stressful? For you? you know, when do these symptoms come and when do they uh, abate? Um, those kind of things also lead to, so then we can connect the stress sometimes. And it seems like when this happens, you feel all these symptoms. You know, could this be a stressful event? So as they connect Karne Siri, I think it becomes a little bit easier for them to understand. Yes, stress can relate to physical symptoms. And so I'm not discounting the physical symptoms. So, Naveen, a quick question. Is there a difference presentation uh, when you're talking about depression from South Asian kids versus the non-South Asian kids? So, there's a lot of research that needs to be done. Um, we know the core symptoms of depression, like a depressed mood, hai, or loss of interest, hai, or sleep disturbances, sleeping too much or too less, or eating too much or too less, uh, feeling guilty about a lot of things, um, or suicidal ideations, uh, energy levels, ki, uh, difference for Dana. All of these kinds of things are pretty similar, I think, in a lot of We do need a lot of research now. But I don't think there's any one particular research paper that shows uh, a clear study between uh, those who are Southeast, uh, South Asians and non-South Asians and you know, comparing these. Um, but they've done a broad spectrum study of adults, mainly, uh, which has shown how they present and how they are a little different uh, in their presentation. But uh, Navina, do you think that uh, when it comes to recognition part of it, as well as the stigma attached to the part of it, uh, non-South Asians are more open to come and talk about it and go through the treatment versus the South Asians? So um, if you take the first generation South Asians, there is a lot of stigma and that cultural bind and fear. Um, and that, I think, keeps them away quite a bit. The second, third generations, I'm starting to notice, and now papers are also being uh, uh, published about that, the studies are coming out. There was this wonderful paper from the Basque University that talked a lot about the first generation versus the second generation and, and how they are um, you know, uh, realizing that there are differences. So Kafi, you know, getting into the mainstream American culture and then uh, looking at it differently, I am sure it's bringing up a little bit more, but what I see 
is when they grow up a little bit, they come and say, I wish we had done this earlier. You know, I wish we had, you know, come and earlier, but my parents wouldn't have allowed it and I didn't recognize it. I was told not to say anything, so I didn't. So now they're 25, 26, 27, and they have issues with relationships because you're not allowed to date. You're not allowed to go out and do things, you know, like mainstream American can. And so that started becoming an issue for some of these people. So there's different aspects of thinking. I'm not saying that's all related to depression. You know, don't get me wrong on that one. But they're realizing that some of these issues as South Asians keep us from going out for treatment, going to seek uh, proper advice and care. Yeah. Go ahead, Ahmed. May I just say one thing extent what Navinna was saying about the culture. American culture की जो बात कर रहे हैं हम unfortunately जो first generation है South Asians की एक मैं उसको baggage नहीं कहूँगा लेकिन एक religious inhibitions cultural inhibitions लेके आते हैं और थोड़ी सी wall हम अपने आगे डालते हैं कि हमने ये नहीं करना उससे revolt करते हैं American culture में stimulate करने से इतना आसान आसानी नहीं होती है हम लोगों के लिए दूसरा एक बात याद रखनी है कि हम आ रहे हैं किसी ने अभी recently भी को post किया हुआ था and I like that phrase कि हम अपने बच्चों को कामयाब होना तो सिखाना सिखाते हैं लेकिन फेल होना नहीं सिखाते कामयाबी की तरफ हम जो है उनको डांट के सिखा देंगे चाहे प्यार से सिखा देंगे आगे बढ़ते रहो लेकिन जब गिरेंगे उससे उठना कैसे है वो नहीं सिखा पाते हैं और उस चीज से भागते हैं कि हमने उसको फेस नहीं करना तो वो जो नीचे गिरता है कब जब बच्चा और वो उस फेलियर को महसूस करता है फिर वो डॉक्टर के पास आता है और बड़े नॉन स्पेसिफिक सिम्टम्स के साथ आता है फिर हमें उसको एड्रेस करना पड़ता है अपने हिसाब से I think the, these are the challenges जो South Asians जो हैं वो face करते हैं first generation जो यहाँ आती है और जो हम implement अपने rules को regulations को implement करने की कोशिश करते हैं अपनी second जो second generation के अंदर। So Sunil, I have a question for you. A question I have Mohsin Nilaz का और I think you will be able to address this. Is anxiety disorder different from depressive disorder? Yes. So um, there is a there is a distinct overlap between anxiety and depression. Um, and you will just, just uh, something um, for the audience key depression ka, ka equivalent koi term Hindi mein nahi hai. That language does not have a term that uh, is equivalent to depression. Sadness ka equivalent hai. So sadness ko Hindi mein Udasi kehte hai. Upper depression ka equivalent koi Hindi mein nahi hai. So I might switch to English when I talk about these technical differences. So pardon me for that. But so anxiety and depression are, you can think of them as two circles. Sometimes they overlap and sometimes they are separate. But there is an overlapping, just like two Venn diagrams, uh, there could be an overlapping uh, section. So there are some anxiety disorders that are. Uh, independently exists. So some examples of anxiety disorders could be generalized anxiety disorder or panic disorder or um, social anxiety disorder or separation anxiety disorder. There are different kinds of anxiety disorders. Hindi word for anxiety could be uh, could be ghabrahat, which is very similar to, you know, fear. Uh, um, um, it could be chinta. It could that is very similar to generalized anxiety disorder. Uh, it could be um, mujhe, uh, which could be very similar to shyness or avoidance. So there are some words that are closely approximating these anxiety disorders, but there are some, it's really hard to describe them as bona fide conditions that exist and have a life of their own. Similarly, on the depression side, you have people who have chronic long-standing depression. We call it dysthymic or dysthymia or dysthymic disorder. We, call, we, we might have a condition called uh, major depression, which is like you have all the symptoms and signs of depression, like sadness, loss of interest in things, difficulties with sleep, difficulties with appetite, guilt, feelings of hopelessness, some um, feelings of uh, difficulties in concentration, suicidal thinking. All these things have to exist together for at least two weeks before we call it a major depressive disorder episode. And sometimes you can have one episode, sometimes you can have two episodes, sometimes you can have three episodes, you can have recurrent episodes. Sometimes depression can be part of what we call bipolar disorder or manic depressive illness. So it is complicated. And sometimes when people's depression goes up, their anxiety can also go up or 
their anxiety and depression can manifest as a somatic symptom or as a physical body symptom which can take them to dr nawaz's office so it's like it's like a very complex interplay of all these things but anxiety disorders are separate disorders depressive disorders can be separate disorders but they can also have this overlap with them so <laughs> i'm going to talk like a very naive person right kyunki uh, a doctor nahi hu to agar mujhe thodi bhi stress ho jaye ya anxiety ho jaye to hum log like kafi hum jaise insaan hote hain jo bas use karenge ya main to bahut depressed hu yaar uh, itna kaam aa gaya i'm so stressed out or uh, because of the situation jo aajkal chal rahi hai pata nahi kal kya hoga i'm so anxious and then we attach this word depressed so easily to it it is like and when you're depressed talk to your friend express your feelings and all those kind of things start coming in aur ek aur jo india mein hai depression or psychiatrist ki jab baat hoti hai to it connects directly to pagalpan right ki nahi yaar nahi jana uske paas nahi jana wo to mujhe pagal karar kar de kar dega ki mere mein problem hai wagaira wagaira and that's how we try to hide it aur isi tarah se kisi se meri baat ho rahi thi ki college mein kai bacche hain south asian community ke jo who feel who have all the symptoms of depression and they feel they need help they talk that they need help and they go to their parents and say we need help and the parents somehow don't want to provide that help they don't want to take them to the doctor because wo pagalpan wala jo hota hai wo ek category mein unko dal dete hain unfortunately aur jaisa ahmed keh rahe the ki hum बच्चों को सक्सेसफुल होना तो सिखाते हैं परंतु तो फेलियर होना सिखाते नहीं है और अगर हमें ऐसा लगता है कि हमारे बच्चे फेलियर की तरफ जा रहे हैं तो हम उसको छुपाना चाहते हैं हम उसको दबाना चाहते हैं नहीं चाहते हैं कि डॉक्टर के पास जाएं सडनली इट बिकम्स वाइड ओपन की माई किट है चैलेंज राइट तो ऐसे हालात में लाइक वॉट एजुकेशनल इंफॉर्मेशन वी शुड प्रोवाइड टू द पेरेंट्स की दिस इज समथिंग वैलिड एंड वी हैव टू एड्रेस इट एक एक चीज मैं ऐड करूंगा राजीव फ्रॉम योर कॉन्वर्सेशन एक्चुअली कि जब बच्चे चाहते हैं कि माँ बाप को बताएं और माँ बाप कहते हैं कि तुमने नहीं जाना सकाइट्रिस्ट के पास उसमें एक चीज मैं ऐड करूंगा जो कि मेरी नजरों में साउथ एशियंस के अंदर एक प्रॉब्लम बहुत ज्यादा है कि लोग क्या कहेंगे अगर लोगों को पता लग गया कि मेरे बच्चे को ये प्रॉब्लम हो गई है तो लोगों ने क्या कहना है ये लोग क्या कहेंगे का जो स्टेटमेंट है ना इस स्टेटमेंट से हमें निकलना पड़ेगा चाहे हमें सोसाइटी सोचना पड़ेगा इसको क्योंकि एक दफा स्टिग्मा लग जाए ये उससे निकलना आसान नहीं है मैं एक एग्जांपल सिर्फ यूज करता हूँ पाकिस्तान के अंदर आजकल पाकिस्तान में किसी को कोरोना हो जाए ना तो कोरोना का स्टिग्मा हो गया है लोग क्या कहेंगे कि मुझे कोरोना हो गया लोगों ने छुपाना शुरू कर दिया है घरों में बिठाना शुरू कर दिया है घरों में मौतें हो रही है डेथ हो रही है लेकिन लोगों को नहीं पता लगना चाहिए ये जो लोग क्या कहेंगे का स्टेटमेंट है ना इस वेरी पावरफुल स्टेटमेंट जो कि आप लोगों सोसाइटी को रोक के रखता है हेल्प uh, सीक करने के लिए मैं इसको सिर्फ ऐड करना चाहता था उस स्टेटमेंट में या गो अहेड डॉक्टर कुशलानी सो मैं आई वांट टू टॉक अ लिटिल बिट मोर अबाउट स्टिग्मा सो स्टिग्मा के देयर आर वेरियस फैसेट्स ऑफ स्टिग्मा सो पहला पहला फैसेट ये है कि वी कॉल देम स्टीरियोटाइप्स सो स्टीरियोटाइप्स आर नेगेटिव थॉट्स और नेगेटिव बिलीफ्स अबाउट अ पर्टिकुलर थिंग whether it is corona virus or whether it is depression they are negative thoughts about something like that you know they they represent they they lead to like snap judgments or snap impressions ki ha ye to kharab hai ya ye to weak hai ya to ye to bahut kamzor hai those are like stereotypes of depression i mean the most brilliant people can get depressed i mean sushant singh was a brilliant person i mean you, everybody who has followed his story knows he was an excellent you know actor dancer multi talented person he's not weak by any means i mean he could do more push ups and sit ups than any one of us but there was the stereotype is that this this person was a weak person because of which this happened the second word that is important is prejudice so prejudice is ek bar wo thought aapke dimag mein aata hai you start believing that thought ki ha ye jo aadmi ye ye race ka hai ya ye country ka hai ya ye religion ka hai wo aise hi tarah ka aadmi hai like you clump everybody who's in this particular region or this particular country or this particular race into one kind of characteristic pattern and then the third aspect of stigma is you start discriminating you start saying ki ha wo mere ghar mein aa sakta hai ye mere ghar mein nahi aa sakta hai main usse baat karunga main isse baat nahi karunga main isko support karunga main isko support nahi karunga main jab bhi match hogi to main ye team ko dunga because ye ye country ka hai par wo team ko nahi dunga because wo wo country ka hai 
So stigma operates at three levels. It operates at the level of you stereotyping somebody. It operates at the level of you having prejudices. And then it operates at the level of you discriminating against somebody. So discrimination has to do with our behavior in response to these ideas. So in order to tackle, there is also a fourth uh, kind of stigma, which is called structural stigma. But structural stigma ka ye matlab hai ki you have created infrastructures in such a way that discriminates people. Like I went to a hospital in Bombay. I saw her ek specialty ka board laga hua hai wahan pe. But ek niche ek board mein likha tha ki we have all specialties except we don't admit any patients or we don't see any patients with mental illness. It was frankly an open thing right under like allergy, immunology, rheumatology, cardiology, endocrinology. But psychiatrically likha tha, in this hospital, we have no clinic or no ward that admits or treats psychiatric patients. This is structural stigma, structural discrimination. And iske teen upai hai. the three uh, solutions for this are one, you can protest. You can protest in, in individual terms. Like you write a letter to somebody and say, please, aise mat bolo, ya, aise mat karo. this is not right. Protest karne se us aapne ko pata chalta hai ki ye galat hai aur ki iska negative asar hum pe ho raha hai. Second, you can educate, which is what we are doing right now. We can talk about it in a very open, uh, non-judgmental, compassionate way. And the third thing is, I think the most important thing is come in contact with people who have suffered with these conditions. Talk to a neighbor, talk to a family member, talk to your aunt, talk to your grandparent. They will tell you how is admi ko humne ek baar depression hua tha, ya is admi ko you know ADHD hai, ya is person ko dementia hai. Ek baar ap in logon se baat karoge, to un apko very quickly, aapko, uh, jaldi mein aa ki, un mein aur aap mein bahut kuch farak nahi hai. And you will normalize this condition, you will normalize these conversations. And it is not a depressed admi nahi hai. Ye, this is a man who's suffering from depression. Ye addicted admi nahi hai. Ye, hmm. This is a man who's suffering from addiction. So we have to separate the condition from the person. This person is much, much more than an anxiety disorder, much, much more than a depressed disorder, much, much more than a schizophrenia like condition. So I think by having these conversations, uh, we will be able to kind of slowly and gradually. Um, uh, before I forget, I want to tell people that starting tomorrow, two of my friends and colleagues, uh, uh, Dr. Manan Shah and Dr. Rachna Rai Singhani and myself are going to start a series of mental health conversations on Facebook Live under the label uh, Samarpan. It's a dedication to the mental health of South Asians. And you know we'll try to have these conversations like this once a month, exclusively on mental health of South Asians. So I please ask all of you to just join in the conversation, send us your questions, send us your requests so that change is not an event, change is a process and it'll take time and it'll take persistence, it'll take focus and it'll take energy. This will take an ongoing lifelong commitment from all of us. Exactly. And uh, Sunil, uh, uh, Naveen, I'm coming to you in a second. Uh, you can let us know on how people can watch that uh, sure. tomorrow, maybe towards the tail end. Or I'll, right send you, I'll send you a link and you can put it on your wall and you know, I can sure. put it on, you know. Absolutely. Naveen, I have a question for you. Um, I, can, may I add? I wanted to add a little bit to Imogen and Sunil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we are also very allocentric, you know, group-oriented people. And, and for us, religion and a holistic view of mind and body, as in, you know, uh, mental illness being uh, karma of some kind, or, you know, mishap of some kind that's being punished. Um, you know, all of those things still are pretty prominent and prevalent. So it takes more than education uh, and talks sometimes to be able to open up to say, hey, this is illness. And it has nothing to do about moral compass or nothing to do about you know your weaknesses or your personality temperament kind of thing it is beyond that and more than that exactly no i agree with it because uh, both of you guys put it very right or three of you is uh, it's it's the condition it's not the person is depressed but the person is going through the condition of depression which can be going through the treatment, if you can have a heart issue, you can have some other issues, it's similar like that. You can't just discriminate a person just because he's having an heart issue. And it's important for them to know that certain conditions like asthma, for example, and uh, energy, correct me if I'm mistaken on this one, diabetes and everything, or the chronic conditions are associated with higher 
uh, incidents of depression and anxiety, and these things have been studied and you know and are out there. So it is not um, something that's you know just pulled out of the thin air. This is part of your medical condition. You know, your body and your mind are in one uh, sink. So from child psychiatrist perspective, Navina. Um, when we talk about ADHD and other conditions, it when those conditions are identified, it's extremely challenging for the parents, um, more than child, that their child is going through this particular condition. And how do you handle that when do they, first of all, do they come to you openly? And when they do come to you, I'm sure they're very uh, kind of reserved on how to present that as an issue, right? How do you handle those kind of cases? So let me start by saying, you know, I am a little bit more privileged in being able to have more time separately with both parents and children completely separately. So I do my evaluations in such a way that children are not part of that initially. Parents give me all the history and I tell them ahead of time, okay, um, if I can separate that, I don't want children waiting in the waiting area wondering what they're talking about that completely ruins our relationships and any kind of um, freedom to express themselves. So I get all the information from the parents and I go through what uh, Sunanji had said about confidentiality issues and everything. Even children, even though they're very young um, and they're dependent, uh, totally dependent on their parents, they have their rights. So what they say to me, I can't just divulge because we have the tendency of parents going back and saying, as I can get, you know, I've doctors guess I'm doing, you know, that kind of pressure is there. So I teach them ahead of time that what they say to me, unless it's a total um, difficult issue where they, I, I know that they're going to have, uh, it's a danger, clear danger to them or somebody else that I can't divulge any of that. But what the parents say, I usually say, hey, I do need to let the child know that I got this information from you. And because it's a family unit, you know, what you say to me, if I bring it to the child, they're able to understand that I am trying to be their ally and their friend in trying to get this problem. And it's very important in their children to have a, an adult as a friend who understands, who doesn't have any kind of prejudiced thinking or any, um, any rules or regulations of what can be said or what cannot be said. So there's an openness in those four modes um, that they are able to say, this stays with my doctor, this stays with, you know, and I can talk about whether it's issues with ADHD, depression, um, you know, LGBTQ issues, a lot of you know, drug, drug and alcohol issues, a lot of things that come, you know, friendships. And, and they feel the prejudice and they feel the restrictions, um, but they don't want to uh, have that in their friendships. Like right? they don't want to see black, white, yellow, blue, green. They want to be able to be friends with some girls, boys, whatever. And mm -hmm. they want to be isolated, they don't want to be seen different. Um, so it, it, I have that privilege of seeing them separately and then bringing it together. Coming to your question, if they bring in and if they, if they are able to talk about this more openly, then all hell doesn't have to be accused. You know, it's, it's easier for me to say, wow, thank you for trusting me and saying that and let's keep going. If they don't, it's again a whole lot of questioning, a whole lot of trying to gain that. Um, you know, and I, can, I usually tell them and say, I can imagine a whole lot of things, but unless I'm in your shoes, I won't know that. You're the only one in your shoes and you're the only one who can say this to me. Right. So I can define it for you. I can help you understand it. I can ask questions if I don't understand it, but tell me I'm not getting it. You know, don't just not mm -hmm. here. Right, right. Um, say yes to everything that I have to recommend. So um, quick question, like, uh, many other diseases that can be happening. We talked to you, Navina, about the child side of it. Uh, do you think this uh, can develop at any age? And also, how do we recognize this for seniors? Like at a certain age, I know certain incidents may happen in family or within the spouses or spouses' death, et cetera, which may have a negative impact on the surviving partner. So. Does it happen at a certain age? Also, can it happen? And how do we recognize it? You all, uh, let me answer it from the let's you, you since you brought up uh, seniors, let me start from that side of the lifespan, and then we can go backwards. Yeah. So every every age group has its life function. So children have a life function of going to school, educating themselves, 
young adults and adults have a life function of you know earning a livelihood supporting their family and community adults uh, seniors have a life function of you know um, imparting their knowledge their wisdom their their um, you know um, um, and shaping you know the lives of uh, uh, people who are younger in age so each each person has its own life function usually what happens is when you see this uh, like what dr nawaz was mentioning people have a tendency to sometimes somaticize or bring physical symptoms into the picture so you might find for instance people start having more physical complaints non specific pain non specific aches headaches you know weakness uh, low energy things like that so you might see an increase in some of those conditions you might see tolerance for pain go down so like you might have osteoarthritis as a person who's in his 60s or 70s but once you get depressed your tolerance for that arthritic pain might go down you might see people taking to alcohol you might see people taking to more smoking and as a result of trying to cope with this in their own unhealthy way they have increased their alcohol intake ki roz teen ya char ya panch drinks pee ke fir main fir hi mereko neend aati hai या जब तक मैं तीन सिगरेट नहीं स्पूक हूं तब तक मुझे चैन नहीं मिलता यू नो वट एवर द केस माइट बी यू कुड सी एंगर कम अप सो लाइक फॉर इंस्टेंस सम ऑफ द अर्लीएस्ट रिपोर्ट्स फ्रॉम मेनी कम्युनिटीज दैट स्टार्टेड कमिंग अप वाज द इंक्रीज इन एंगर द इंक्रीज इन डोमेस्टिक वायलेंस द इंक्रीज इन यू नो अग्रेशन टुवर्ड्स देयर ओन फैमिली मेंबर्स एंड दोस थिंग्स वर गोइंग अप सो इट्स ऑलमोस्ट लाइक यू हैव अ सर्टेन अमाउंट ऑफ कोपिंग कैपेबिलिटी और व्हाट वी कॉल रेजिलियंस and the current condition has overwhelmed that capacity ki tum char cheez handle kar sakte ho abhi tumko life ne eight cheeze diye hain now you are kind of overwhelmed and it's kind of you know uh, spilling out in all these different ways by somatic symptoms anger aggression addiction sadness apathy for adults or young adults if you go down one one life uh, decade or couple of decades it might lead to loss of interest in work feeling burnt out feeling like you know i can't uh, i don't have the energy mere ko din din mein 2 baje hi mujhe thak jata hu mujhe i don't have the energy to kind of go on until 5 or 6 always thinking about friday kabhi aayega you know thursday kabhi aayega because mm-hmm. you are you know even on monday you feel like abhi friday abhi it's friday is there uh, so you see what we call not just ab- absenteeism you also see presenteeism which means tum kaam pe to ja rahe ho physically par tumhara man kahin aur hai like you know when am i going to have the next vacation when am i going to why is this, my boss going blah 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 or why is this coworker doing such and such so you see all these things that you're not functioning in a very optimum way you if you are a you know if you are a full functioning uh, uh, machinery uh, mental machinery physical machinery it is showing signs of wear and tear signs of breakdown much more easily and then as you come to a more younger age you might see educational impairment you might see people failing in classes you might see people having behavioral disturbances in classes they might have other unhealthy behaviors like in young young uh, uh, adults or adolescents you might see people might do self injurious behaviors or they might have eating disorders or they might have all kinds of conditions basically it's telling you that their system is overwhelmed and they are manifesting that feeling of overwhelm in all these different ways so one of the things about education is for us just like we know all these spices we know all these colors we know all these film heroes and heroines and actors and actresses we know all these periodic elements you know we we pride ourselves and our children when they tell us ki mereko periodic table yaad hai ki mujhe ye yaad hai but we never ever have a conversation about how many mental disorders do you know about or how many psychiatric conditions do you know about because that is something that we have not ever wanted to talk about we have right. always swept it under the carpet and i think that's that really handicaps our community and it i think we want to succeed in this country we want to succeed in the world but i think this is one thing that unless we get a good handle on it we will always be at a disadvantage yeah i think that's a very important message dr sunil because you need to let the south asian community know especially the first generation that the second generation is growing up in the country and they're recognizing this things sometimes more than we do and we need to start accepting it because every child is different every child is unique in their own way and if there are certain things we are seeing that in kind of a mental health or depression side of it let's recognize it and i 
sure you guys will agree that there are treatments out there and uh, early identification of these things and the treatment of these things are better meant rather than hiding that under the carpet and forgetting about it because that will cause bigger issue in the future rather than taking a take treatment on it. But I have a question, and this is a little <laughs> away from the topic, is does exercise, good food, having a pet in the house, uh, other kinds of distraction which basically lightens up your mood, brings joy in your life, hanging out with positive friends, uh, talking about positive things, staying away from the negativity, all those kind of things, are they possible things to address depression? Um, yeah, go ahead, Navina. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I always um, tell the children the same. You know, medication is only one aspect of that. You know, we don't have, everything is not all chemical balancing alone. You know, yes. So it's important to have, we know very clearly, sleep is one major indicator of issues that are not going well. You know, and that has been linked to having uh, more anxiety or later on predictive um, depressive symptoms and so on. Um, you know, and there is actually a study, I found one, five fruit and vegetables servings per day, you know, predicts um, less depressive episodes in the future. They, they, and they, of course, the disclaimer they had, it was that, you know, it, more studies are needed on this one. So you have all sorts of studies being done, and all sorts of, you know, people, mindfulness and everything else you know exercise we know this you know, it pushes up endorphins and it's really helpful for a lot of people there are many who will go for a job and say i feel so relieved and so de-stressed i'm fine you know but when you're talking about depression as a medical condition any one of those things as treatments is not what is going to be so it's a healthy lifestyle when you're able to balance your platform of handling things is a higher level and you can balance things, definitely would be helpful. So, uh, you know, people will talk about, you know, I want to take supplements, I don't want to take medicine. Supplements are just that, they're supplements. In addition to something good happening, you can take this just in case. But I look at it as a- Yeah, go ahead, Dr. Anavas. Yeah, yeah, it's a better complete. I'm sorry, what did you say? Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, no, no, I was just waiting for my turn. So uh, oh, go ahead, please. I, was just, I always tell them as a biopsychosocial you know, um, theory, genetically, we have no way of modifying what we inherit. You know, yet, not yet. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Psychological factors would be anything, uh, psychosocial factors, marital discord, poor communication skills, uh, you know, uh, baggage that we come from, dysfunctional parenting, all of those cause issues that uh, later on can have vulnerability increase in children. Um, you know, and an individual is your temperament. You know, if you're very highly emotionally um, struck, they know that these children can have more of the, so I, I joke and say, if you have a buffalo hide and everything rolls off of you, you know, then you may not have as much of a problem as, you know, being a sea sponge and you hold on to everything, it's going to tear at some point, leak at some point. So your temperament and how you discuss things, how you relieve yourself of these issues makes a difference in how you handle it. So looking at all of that, then we think about what treatments and how to go about it. Okay, yeah, Ahmed? Yeah, Rajiv, my point which I wanted to raise actually here is from an internal medicine practice perspective, which we see in the office, I have a question for both of them. When uh, can we make a decision that is for psychotherapy or is for pharmaceutical uh, agents is for the treatment? Karne ke liye? Why I'm asking this question? When I non South Asian community, ko dekhta hon, they are seeking for a pill. Unko uh, smile ki pill chahiye, unko sone ki pill chahiye, unko hasne ki pill chahiye. When South Asian community, ko main dekhta hon, they are relatively very resistant to take any medication. Well, number one, to identify the issue, then accepting the issue, that's a whole different discussion which we already had. But from the therapy modalities, how do you differentiate that you have to give it to me? Or you have to give it to therapy, or you have to give it to therapy, whatever you have talked about, the exercise has been done, the friends have been done, everything they all are part of it. So how do we differentiate kaise kare in both uh, therapy modalities? So I might, let me, let me say something about the process that I follow when I see a patient. So I'm going to uh, 
people have heard the um, term signs and symptoms. People have heard the term diagnosis. People have heard the term treatment. I'm going to introduce a fourth uh, component that many of us professionals use that many people may not know about, and that is called formulation. And it is very important to understand what is a formulation. So a simple way to understand what is a formulation is what we use a method called seven P's. So I'm going to talk about seven different P's, which will explain to you how I formulate a case. So first P stands for presentation. Like how does a person present in my office? Kya signs and symptoms? Kya lab test? Kya imaging study? What is a presentation? Second is the predisposing factors. The second P is predisposing factors. Ki kya uska genetic history hai? Kya uska family history hai? Kya uska childhood history hai? Uske grades kaise the? Unka predisposition, uh, predisposing factors kya hai? The third P is what precipitated the problem. Ki kya hua do din pehle ya do hafte pehle ki usko ye problem bad gaya. Like what his system got stressed. The fourth P is perpetuant, which is what maintains this problem. Ki ha, this person is shy, he's awkward, he has a hard time making friends, which makes it hard for him to come out of this loneliness, come out of this isolation. The fifth P is a pattern. Ki what pattern does he show me like month after month, week after week? What is this pattern? Yes, P jab jama hote hai, to be, I have an understanding of what is the formulation of this person. Because six depressed patients or three depressed patients are all different. A depressed senior is very different from a farmer in Maharashtra who commits or uh, who dies from suicide is very different from a, a young teenager who's growing up in Mumbai who has pressure to succeed in his board exams or 12th exam because he's trying to get into IIT or into medical school. All these people have depression, but they're all different because their formulation in my mind is different. So to answer Ahmed's question, I let the formulation guide how to proceed. So formulation also includes what are the strengths and weaknesses of this person. If this is a person who's a very intelligent person, who's a very logically thinking person, I might recommend cognitive behavior therapy because he may understand that better. He may understand that there's a relationship between thoughts and feelings and behaviors. And if I change my thinking, I can change my feelings and I can change my behavior. If this is a person who is very somatic, not very psychologically sophisticated or minded, I might suggest medication like, if you take this drug, you'll get a little relief, a little stress. And they may be fine with that. So I let the patient, I, I first, I try to get the formulation in my mind. I give it back to the patient and the family, see how they interact with this formulation. Some people might completely agree with it. Some people might modify it a little bit. Some people might disagree with it. But I'm interested in knowing ki, what do they think about my formulation. I'm trying to construct a story in my mind that I can say to them. And then they can say it back to me. Ki, baba, ye mujhe sahi lag Once they buy into this story, then I can tell them, Achha, I have to just push these levers. Now I have to pull this a little bit. I have to push this a little bit. I have to adjust this a little bit, which is where medications can come in handy. Psychotherapy can come in handy. What do you prefer? What do you prefer? What is your method? They'll say, Baba, ye, roj, roj, uh, hafte par, every hour, I, I have no time to come one hour a week to go see a therapist. I want something that I don't have to stress too much about. I would rather take a pill, take a pill once a day and then forget about it. Then I say, okay, you know, I'm, I'm going to recommend this, these two or three choices. Why don't you tell me what, which one would you prefer? If they say, no, I really need to understand myself. I really need to develop some internal coping skills. I need to develop a way of trying to see what is causing what, how is family interacting with my depression, then I might suggest th therapy. Even therapy maybe, there's individual therapy, there's counseling, couples counseling, there's family therapy. So depending on the formulation, I will let the journey kind of go forward. That is amazing, Sunil. It's like, today's <laughs> uh, session, I'm just trying to bring a, another lighter side of it. People would be spending ton of money <laughs> to get the education that they're getting in today's session. Your, your time is extremely uh, and, valuable. And sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but I forgot the last two P's, which is planning. The, the sixth P is planning. And then the seventh P is prognosis. So based on these seven P's, I construct this story. And sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, 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 absolutely not. It's like, that's great because how many people would get this education other than <laughs> sitting down and talking to us about it? Um, so, Emma, you had a question for Naveena also, right? On the similar topic, on the <laughs> side. I was <laughs> discussing on the South Asian science. I have a lot of people in high school. My parents are like, they are not going to be able to do it. They are not going to be able to do it. They are not going to be able to do it. They are 
So how does she handle these kind of situations actually when she comes across? So I was going to extend what uh, Smriti had said, which is pretty much how we do. I call it a frequent conference and, and a talk. I know you won't have that kind of time, you know, for kind of practice. So your question about how do we refer, when do we refer, is a tough one to answer, you know. So um, when they come to me, however, it's pretty much similar like this. You know? What's it that they're coming in? You know, a lot of parents are like, just give a pill. You don't want to have anything to do with therapy. Also, if they've had bad experience fell in that, so then they don't want to go back and, you know, uh, start with therapy. Oh, we don't have that kind of time. No, just go. ADHD by far, you know, is one thing where medications first and then behavioral management next. Anxieties and everything, I always say, you know, if it's not to the extreme where they're falling apart, you know, if we start with cognitive behavioral therapy, and if we start with, you know, some psychotherapy, which is supportive, and then figure out what else is left behind to treat, that would be our option. So I give them the options based on what I formulate like this, what we had said, the excellent seven Ps. Um, I put them together in three different parts, but, um, and then we go over and say, Ki, aapko kya, uh, lagta hai and then how do we, um, as an expert then, how do I say, listen, this is why I'm recommending and that's important for them to hear my piece of it. I will you, I would try this first, but I'm waiting and willing to work with you on whichever way. As long as the kid gets help, I'm willing to do it. Yeah, go ahead, Dr. Kishlani. Yeah, so I think the other thing that determines what you do is the severity of the problem. So if it's a mild problem or if it is a problem that hasn't yet developed, then you think about all those strategies that you mentioned, whether it's exercise or diet or supplements or you know, jogging or interacting with friends, that's, those are preventive strategies to improve our resilience. If it's a moderate problem, which means you are really struggling to go to work or struggling to go to school, then you might have to consider, you know, either therapy or medications. But if it's a severe problem, you might have to go right to medications, or you might even have to consider a, a, a day program or a hospitalization, because just like अगर आदमी को अगर हार्ट अटैक होगा अभी के अभी हार्ट अटैक होगा तो आप उसको ये नहीं बोलोगे कि आप फैट्स कम खाओ या आप शुगर कम करो या आप ये करो आप बोलोगे नहीं यू बेटर गो टू कॉल 911 एंड गो टू द इमरजेंसी रूम सिमिलरली इन डिप्रेशन टू यू कुड हैव अ पेशेंट प्रेजेंट इन इन डिफरेंट स्टेजेस ऑफ सीवियरिटी एंड दिस इज वेयर अ प्रोफेशनल कैन हेल्प यू ठीक है ये दिस सीम्स क्वाइट सीवियर और दिस सीम्स क्वाइट मॉडरेट एंड दिस इज हाउ फास्ट वी नीड टू एक्ट अदरवाइज यू मे एंड अप लूजिंग अ चाइल्ड आई मीन वन ऑफ द इंप्लीकेशंस ऑफ us uh, not taking action forget long term effects but even short term people can hurt themselves people can you know uh, attempt suicide people can you know uh, completely make impulsive decisions about their life so it can become a very life threatening condition or it can really affect or destroy lives destroy careers destroy marriages it's really important for us to decide how severe the problem is so we can act accordingly so um you know we are almost coming to an hour of uh, <laughs> this discussion and it can go on for hours and hours actually um there i will give you all as such at the closing statement opportunity but i do want to say that um, this topic is extremely important uh, depression is a medical condition um, and let's uh, i would also request let's not use this words so commonly and loosely कि मेरे को तो यार डिप्रेशन हो गया है यार ये बंद हो गया सब कुछ तो आई एम सो डिप्रेस्ड यार कैंड ऑफ थिंग बिकॉज इट इज द कंडीशन पीपल हु आर गोइंग थ्रू इट कैंड ऑफ थिंग दे आर सीरियस अबाउट दिस थिंग एंड लेट्स नॉट मेक मेक दिस एज अ फनी टॉपिक आल्सो लेट्स नॉट क्लासिफाई इन टू द थिंग्स ऑफ टेक द स्टिग्मा अवे ऑन दिस होल पागल फन काइंड ऑफ स्टफ एंड सुनील आई होप योर सेवन पीस यू हैव ऑलरेडी got your copyright and trademark on that thing somehow <laughs> it is not my copyright i have learned it from somebody else this is something that they teach us in uh, psychiatry uh, school so this is not my copyright but i think it is a very underutilized tool it's a very underutilized uh, experience that patients have koi unko kuch batata nahi hai koi unko kuch samjhata nahi especially south asian practitioners or even physicians in india for instance i will tell them i will guide them ki aap apne doctors se ja ke ye baat ये उनको पूछिए उधर जाएंगे उनके पास दे विल यल एट देम दे विल से मेरे को ये टाइम नहीं ये सब तेरे को समझाने के लिए तू जाके अपना किसी और के साथ पूछ या यू नो बोस समवेयर सो आई थिंक अ लॉट ऑफ अस मेडिकल प्रैक्टिशनर्स हैव टू चेंज आल्सो एंड वी हैव टू काइंड ऑफ बी ओपन टू दिस डायलॉग एंड वी हैव टू बी ओपन एंड मे बी इवन नॉट इनसाइड जस्ट आवर मेडिकल ऑफिसेस बट डू 
dialogues like these on different forums on different social media because the iski bhi zarurat hai i think it's like a pyramid you know like when when somebody comes to me in a hospital they are like at the most severe stage but there's a lot of groundwork that needs to be done at the very bottom at at everybody's level at the family level when you have conversations about this at your dinner table you know invite conversations uh, extend conversations bring up difficult topics to discuss like you know uh, somebody some somebody dies of suicide what do you think about it like what are your thoughts about it have these conversations you will develop a vocabulary over time and over time you will educate yourself and have better if your kids if your family members see that you're talking about these topics respectfully tomorrow if they have a problem they will come to you otherwise they absolutely. will not come to you absolutely absolutely and this exactly when uh, i was talking to viraj the other day and we said that we are planning to do this topic he he started having conversation about the different kids that he have been meeting in the university and having this conversation so absolutely and we need to encourage and we are trying to bring these education series for the south asian community to basically uh, recognize this thing take the stigma out of it uh, take the right treatment so that uh, just recognize this is a medical condition and needs to be treated accordingly um, so with that uh, i will give each one of you the time for your closing statements so ahmed go ahead main sirf ek statement bolunga yaar elephant is in the room don't ignore it please agar nazar aa rahi hai koi problem isko address karo family ke level pe address karo physicians ke paas leke jao uske discussion karo isko hesitate mat karo log kya kahenge ki statement se bhi bahar niklo logon se koi fark nahi padta baat karo doston se baat karo idaron se baat karo apne doctors ke sath jaake baat karo open the conversation that is the only way we can overcome this problem andar hi andar rakh ke aap is problem ko deal nahi kar sakte address the issue rather than hiding it or putting it under the carpet exactly yeah sunil yeah as i said this is the first of these facebook conversations that i'm having but i'm going to have one tomorrow with my uh, friends and colleagues so you can join us there as well tomorrow's topic is going to be suicide so if you want to know more about suicide join us tomorrow uh, at it's going to be at uh, 11 a.m uh, 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 eastern standard time or 8:30 uh, you know on um, indian standard time in the evening so you know we'll try to do this maybe once a month and and try to have these conversations so it's an open dialogue and we would like to know what you want to know so what we can shape our conversations depending on your need so i i just invite all of you to come and join us yes yeah, and please share that on my wall so that we can share it with all the listeners of the show navina medical condition medical condition medical condition with a lot of behavioral psychosocial implications Please, please, please don't see your children as your extensions. Just as your pride and joy when they are successful, and not so, and be ashamed when they are not. You know, please keep your mind open, listen, and then there is every possibility that this can uh, be managed and managed well, especially in South uh, Asians, when everything is all about um, culture and religion and uh, you know success and everything. this gets pushed under the rug uh, under the rock not even the rug uh, quite often you know and, and that's a sad part these are brilliant kids we need to just let them you know whether they want to flourish in anything we need to hear that out you know and not be judgmental about it great so thank you so much thanks all of you guys it was a great session i hope all the watchers and the listeners of this show enjoyed it we'll continue to bring more of these series of healthy living education series for all our listeners appreciate it have a fantabulous weekend ahead it's a beautiful day outside uh, enjoy and i'll talk to you guys sometime in the near future thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you bye guys bye thank you